She said that the most merciful thing that a family could do to one of its young is to kill it. Well, I'm sure that was taken out of context. In this video, I'm going to show you who Margaret Sanger really was and why she founded Planned Parenthood. These 21 quotes by Margaret Sanger reveal the wicked roots of the abortion movement and expose the twisted mindset behind the present-day culture of death. In her own words, Sanger peddles racism, eugenics, contraception, and abortion, while demonstrating a visceral hatred for children, parenthood, marriage, and the Catholic Church. Every quote I'm about to give you has been verified and is well documented. But for my view, I believe that there should be no more babies. The most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. I accepted an invitation to talk to the women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan. I was escorted to the platform, was introduced, and began to speak. In the end, through simple illustrations, I believed I had accomplished my purpose. A dozen invitations to speak to similar groups were proffered. Do you believe there is such a thing as a as sin? Well, I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have disease from their parents, that have no chance in the world to be a human being, practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mark when they're born. That, to me, is the greatest sin that people can, can commit. The most serious evil of our times is that of encouraging the bringing into the world of large families. The most immoral practice of the day is breeding too many children. Eugenics without birth control seems to us a house built upon the sands. It is at the mercy of the rising stream of the unfit. As an advocate of birth control, I wish to take advantage of the present opportunity to point out that the unbalance between the birth rate of the unfit and the fit, admittedly the greatest present menace to civilization, can never be rectified by the inauguration of a cradle competition between these two classes. The most urgent problem today is how to limit and discourage the overfertility of the mentally and physically defective. No more children should be born when the parents, though healthy themselves, find that their children are physically or mentally defective. A marriage license shall in itself give husband and wife only the right to a common household and not the right to parenthood. No woman shall have the legal right to bear a child and no man shall have the right to become a father without a permit for parenthood. Permits for parenthood shall be issued upon application by city, county, or state authorities to married couples, providing they are financially able to support the expected child have the qualifications needed for proper rearing of the child, have no transmissible diseases, and, on the woman's part, no medical indication that the maternity is likely to result in death or permanent injury to health. No permit for parenthood shall be valid for more than one birth. Apply a stern and rigid policy of sterilization and segregation to that grade of population whose progeny is tainted, or whose inheritance is such that objectionable traits may be transmitted to offspring. These two words, birth control, sum up our whole philosophy. It means the release and cultivation of the better elements in our society, and the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extinction of defective stocks, those human weeds which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. Organized charity itself is the symptom of a malignant social disease. My own position is that the Catholic doctrine is illogical, not in accord with science, and definitely against social welfare and race improvement. All of our problems are the result of overbreeding among the working class. Knowledge of birth control is essentially moral its general, though prudent, practice must lead to a higher individuality and ultimately to a cleaner race. Feeble-mindedness perpetuates itself from the ranks of those who are blandly indifferent 
to their racial responsibilities. And it is largely this type of humanity we are now drawing upon to populate our world for the generations to come. In this orgy of multiplying and replenishing the earth, this type is pari passu multiplying and perpetuating those direst evils in which we must, if civilization is to survive, extirpate by the very roots. Birth control itself, often denounced as a violation of natural law, is nothing more or less than the facilitation of the process of weeding out the unfit, of preventing the birth of defectives or of those who will become defectives. If we are to make racial progress, this development of womanhood must precede motherhood in every individual woman. Please help us open more eyes to the truth by sharing these quotes. America will only turn back to God when the abortion agenda is fully rejected in our culture. Thanks for watching and God bless.